what I'd like to do next is to fit the back gutter. Now prior to doing that, we need some timber work in the back of this chimney. We need a piece of board, normally about five, six inches. It's going to fit in that sort of position. Probably it's going to fall through the roof. But what you need to do with the materials that you, you may have there, a piece of batten there that's going to hold it. And find another piece. And what we're looking for is this to be flat. Now normally you've got to nail these obviously in position, screw them in position or whatever. But prior to doing that, I would suggest you make sure everything's in order. So let's just go through the procedure. We've got our lay board, sole board. You need another piece of batten there. We've got another piece we can put on this side. And the idea of these are to support the lead, now the tiles to, or slates in this case. So what we've in fact done is managed to make an area where the lead can lay without dipping and bowing over the side and allowing water in the building. We put our board in here and we're, if we're happy with everything we can now fix it. We take the back gutter, having straightened it as we did with the front apron and then we can put it in position. Again, don't start all this smashing it about with a dresser. Make sure it's fitting well before you start dressing anything. One of the biggest problems I've found when people fit these is they don't put the tray high enough or the sole board and it ends up with a big dip here. If in the event of it being too low, take the back gutter out either raise it or put some more wood in there. Unless you get this right, the rest of it won't follow through. What I'm going to do now is film from the side where we'd already slated. So you can start to see how the back gutter is slated in and weathered. Before we go too far, we often need to put a piece of timber through here, this area, to take up the, to take up the thickness of the slate because this one otherwise will rattle once we come across here. Let's do that. This again will vary depending on the material you're using. We just now a piece into position and what we're looking for is a sort of the same height really as we've got here. We've got to this stage of just recapping we've put our soak it up the side, we've slated as much as we possibly can and now we're going to fit the back gutter. The sole board's in, a little tilting fillet here to take the slates. As you can see That's how it fits. The reason the sole is in place there is twofold really. If anyone's at the back of the chimney, it gives them an opportunity for something to step on without breaking the slates. And secondly, it stops the build up of leaves and debris. The fact that it's an open space allows the wind to dry out and, uh, and the wind and rain to actually get it off the roof. However, because the step flashing hasn't been done, I will need to lift this because it's got to go behind. So we'll do the step flashing next before we proceed with the weathering of the back gutter. The other measurement I need is from this joint here. I'm not going to bother with that one. I could cut that one out and do it there, but uh, the piece of that I've found is more than wide enough. I can measure from there down. It wants to be over there at least two inches, 50 mil. I've got a piece of lead here, it's just a random piece, but it's not far away. What I'll do first of all, measure the centre and put a centre mark on it. And we said that was 570 divided by 2, it was 285, yeah. 
that we come off of there 285 that's 570 right we've got our marks there it is and we can then bend this And what we've also got there, the marks we originally made here, square them off. And then we can cut it to those marks. Now you will have noticed I've got a large piece of that's going to turn in. That could be as little as 30 mil. But I'm not going to do a lot if I cut that off, so I might as well put the lot in. It gives us plenty of cover, and it saves me a little bit of time messing about cutting it off. And all I need to do then is to turn these ends up. Now you can see, either way, it doesn't really matter. I can take that down and put it on the outside or on the inside. If you're concerned about these little pieces showing on the end, that can be cut back a bit. And likewise on the other end. This can then go over the top there, covering the existing lead. One other thing you sometimes do, when you get them like that, the bricklayer comes along and puts the brickwork on top and he might knock it off out of the way. So what I often do is get yourself a nail, find a joint, and just put it in, just to stop it moving. Once the cement or mortar's on top of it, it is not going anywhere. Now in this particular case, it's reasonably neat. However, this can be trimmed to shoot whatever profile you might have in this area, i.e. you could take it back slightly on that line and obviously the same on the other side. I hope that's been fairly clear. Also be looking at later on how we can do this when we're using tiles that go to slates uh, and we'll be showing you that on another little video clip that we intend to do.